What's up, YouTube? It's Tad the Tech here. And today, I wanted to give you guys a thousand mile update on my brand new 2023 Chevy Camaro. So I wanted to discuss with you guys the experience of purchasing the vehicle. Um, I wanted to share with you guys the things I like about the vehicle, the things I don't like about the vehicle, and just the overall experience with the car so far. Um, I got it last month. Tomorrow will be exactly a month um, since I purchased it. And um, it is November 21st, 2022 at the time of me recording this. Um, and as many of you know, the car market is in the chaos right now. So if you're looking for a used car, good luck. The prices are ridiculously inflated. Um, same thing with new cars, the supply, the, the chip shortage, the issues in China, the lockdown, which are happening all over again. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's been tough, especially for people that want to purchase car interest rates. If you're going to finance a car, they're, they're high as hell. So just those things in my experience, my personal experience with it, um, I, I got very lucky with this vehicle and um, I just want to share that with you guys and kind of tell you what I had to go through. So I got about 1100 on the odometer, a um, little over 1100, but the braking period according to, to the user manual is uh, for the Chevy Camaro 2023, um, it is 1500. So for 1500 miles, you are braking in the engine. You're not supposed to, you know, go past 4,000 RPMs. Um, you're not supposed to uh, press 30% or more throttle. You don't want to drive at a constant speed. So those little things that are, you know, when you get a new car, I know most people want to go ahead and just floor it and see what the, the new engine does. And, um, but you got to be very careful, especially if it's a investment, um, you know, cars are technically not an investment. Any financial person will tell you that it's a liability. Anything that takes money out of your pocket is considered a liability, not an asset. So um, it's, it's not an investment, but it is something that you purchase, right? And if you're truly a car person, you're going to want to take care of it especially if you plan on keeping it for a long time. I did not lease it, I purchased it. I am gonna keep it for a long time. So of course I'm gonna take care of it. I have been babying the hell out of this car. I have not went more than 30% throttle. I have not went more than 3,900 RPMs. And it's hard sometimes because I've had the car for a month and I don't know what the car can truly do. So it's, 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 it's hard. But um, at the same time, I wanna make sure my engine stays good and I do what the user manual tells me to do. So I'm gonna do the first oil change at I think 1400, I'm gonna do it because I just can't wait. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna take it to the dealer and do my braking oil change. Another thing about the braking period that you know every Camaro is gonna be different and I think I should have said that in the beginning, but um, I specifically got a V6, I did not get a V8. Um, I think I chose the convertible, um, price difference over the V8 because it truly to me means more than going faster, right? I mean, at the end of the day, the V6 and the V8 is gonna go at the same speed legally. Um, so the the sense of me getting a V8, especially with, we're on the East Coast, we got lucky, you know, gas prices are about 334 for regular at the time I'm recording this, um, almost about 389 to $4 for premium, um, at, you know, my Acro TL Epo premium. So yeah, it's, it's for me, if you're on the West Coast and you're paying $5 for regular gas, why would you want a V8? Like, it just doesn't make no sense to me. I mean, cool, you, you can go fast. Again, at the end of the day, we can all go the same speed legally um, on the highway. Now, it is faster than my previous car. And that's all that matters to me, right? So I got the V6 and um, I mean, I got the convertible. I'd rather be cruising with the top down <laughs> in the beautiful weather instead of speeding and then, you know, possibly catching tickets and then wasting money in court. Now I'm gonna talk about purchasing the vehicle. So originally I had this car built out on Chevy.com and um, I took that build and took it to a dealership and I looked at you know, what the total cost would be. Um, I wanted to know what their market adjustment was. And um, I just wanted to see what the time frame and turnaround time would be as well. Um, I did not do any research and I think I should have watched some YouTube videos about other people purchasing the Camaro because, um, you know, some dealers can actually be sneaky. So, you know, be aware of that. 
But uh, the dealership I took it to, and I did not purchase it from them, but I did take my build originally to them. Um, their market adjustment was 5,000. So what that, what that means to anyone that doesn't know is whatever the MSRP is, when you build your car, you would add $5,000 for you know market, um, the way the market is, which is the shortages of supplies. Um, so you're basically paying more to get the car because of the shortages, right? Supply and demand. Um, ask them how much the deposit was which it was a thousand and it was non-refundable, right? So if I changed my mind, I lost that thousand. And they told me the turnaround time would be about six months. He said it could be sooner, but you know, you're looking at about three months. Um, I think the dealership has to get a uh, allotment for them to be able to uh, order the car, right? I think that's how it works. Never worked at a dealership, so I'm not really familiar with the process itself. But there's videos out there and you can, you know, YouTube them. What my build included was, and maybe I'll put a screenshot of it right there. Um, and I'm kind of doing this off the top of my head. So um, what it included was, it was a white 1LT V6, obviously, um, convertible. It had the black 20 inch rims. It had the red knee pads. It had the red seat belt. Um, you know, fabric seats, obviously no leather seats because it's 1LT. Um, I think it had the gas cap and the blacked out tail lights. Um, and I think that was about it. And maybe the spoiler, if I remember correctly. That was pretty much the build. And I told the dealership, I'll think about it. You know, give me a couple of days. Um, what happened is two or three days later, I went online and I was searching for, you know, this car. And I happened to cross um, a dealership that was actually closer to my house that, this car that's behind me um, was in transit. Now, it didn't have everything that I wanted on it, of course, but um, it was it was a little weird because it had the RS package and the MSRP was actually a little bit less than my build. Um, and I, I'm gonna talk about all that, like the features on this car um, versus my build in, in a second. But uh, I called the dealership, it was Friday. Um, I was getting off work and I called the dealership and I said, I see you guys have this Camaro that's in transit. Um, do you know when it would get there? And he actually said that it just got off the truck a couple hours ago. So I told him I'll be in there to see it. Um, I sat down with the salesperson, looked at the car, uh, got the total number, and um, with their market adjustment, it was actually two thousand. So it was three thousand cheap, three thousand dollars cheaper, um, just in the market adjustment cost. And the MSRP was slightly cheaper, like I said, um, than my original build. Um, so I told him if I could put a deposit on it and think about it for a couple of days. And he laughed and he told me that this was the only Camaro that they've had in, I think, 10 months. And there was no way that I would be able to put a deposit for them to hold it. So I, t I told him, okay. And I went home and thought about it. And the next morning I came in, um, signed the paperwork. And, um, you know, me and my fiance, she drove the car off the lot. And um, we left with it. So it, we got lucky um, on the actual car itself because it, it's hard to find it, especially the way you want it. It's That's something I've learned in the past with my even my Acura. Um, I looked for years to get my Acura. And when I actually gave up, I found it. It was, it was pretty crazy. Now, this car did have most of the things I had on my build, except uh, two things. However, um, this car also had three things that were not on my build, which I think now that I think about it, I would have been highly upset if it wasn't on my build. Um, I don't think I would have got the best experience possible. So I brought the price sheet. I'm gonna kind of read off what this car does have. Um, so the first thing that my build did not have was the technology package, which gives you the eight inch screen, as well as the Bose speakers. Um, the second thing that this car had was the red uh, brake calipers, um, which is Brembo brakes, which I, I love them. It really blends the color of the wheels really nicely. Um, the third thing this, uh, the RS package includes, um, which is the black tail lamps and the black um, bow tie, which is the logos on the car. And um, also, it gives you the silver in the um, bumper, which, um, you know, you guys will see in the video as well. So that was the RS package itself. Um, came with the bows, came with the red caliper. And then my last but favorite, favorite, favorite add-on, which was not in my build, was the dual exhaust.
So the dual exhaust mode is really, really nice. It has a really deep um, growl to it. I love it. It's not crazy after, you know, when you turn it on on a cold start, it is loud. But after like 30 seconds, it, it does calm down. And it really growls when you need it to, you know? So it is quiet, but you know, and again, that's, that's the beauty of cars, right? You can change it to your liking. Those three things, um, I, I think I, it made up for the two things I did not have. So the two things I didn't have was the knee pads, the red knee pads. Um, which I already have them because I ordered them from GM and installed them already. So not as bad. And then the second thing was the red seat belt, which, you know, it's not a deal breaker. Um, I, I can get over that. But uh, yeah, it had everything else. So I, I think I'm, I'm really, really happy with the way it turned out. I got the vehicle that day and I have to wait a couple months. It was slightly cheaper than my build. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving the car so far. So, so one of the things I don't like about the car is the space. Um, I think any sport car, it's hard to be driven as a daily because of, you know, just the space itself. But um, yeah, it doesn't really have that much space in the glove compartment or the armrest. Um, so that's one thing I don't like about it. The second thing I don't like about it is um, it says you can fit four people, but there's no way you can fit four people in that car. Maybe two people, um, meaning adults and a kid or a pet right so um other than that I, there's no way you can fit i would say four adults in there um especially with someone that's tall as me i'm six feet that seat is all the way to the back there is no leg room uh the third thing i don't like about the car it does not have a home garage opener which you know it's not a deal breaker but it just sucks that i have to carry my remote um and i think if you're spending forty thousand dollars on a car you should at least be able to have you know something simple like now, that. the things that i do love about the car um my first one being the steering wheel i absolutely love that steering wheel um it's the bottom bottom out i think bottom end whatever they call it um steering wheel and it really gives you that you know true race feeling sporty car um and i think that was a big selling point when i was looking at muscle cars i've driven the um, mustang convertible stick shift um i've driven the challenger and i've driven obviously the camaro and um i think the camaro was the one that really caught my attention and i think it was that steering wheel i love that steering wheel um the second thing i love about the car is going to be um apple carplay i love that you know that's a basic feature um i know the mustang and the challenger i don't think they had uh, apple carplay um without upgrading the package the third thing i love about the car would be um the dual exhaust kind of like what we discussed love the growl it really really growls even in a v6 it, it has a nice nice um tone to it the fourth thing i love about the car is going to be the convertible you can actually uh, use the remote to um, drop the top and I think that's really cool especially on hot days when you know you're going to be driving with the top down um, before you get in the car you can actually drop the top with the remote and I think it's a pretty cool car show feature as well so that pretty much sums up the video and my personal experience of getting this car um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. And if it was, please, you know, smash that thumb button. And, you know, if you're not a subscriber, please go ahead and subscribe, especially if you made it this far. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't cost a thing to subscribe and it obviously helps me out and puts me in the algorithm with YouTube. So yeah, if you like the video, there's going to be a lot of more videos coming about the car. Um, I also purchased a drone, which I'm going to, you know, kind of start doing drone videos um, with the car. And, you know, there's a lot to do. One thing that sucks, don't ever purchase a convertible in the winter because guess what? It's in the garage. It's, it's almost 30 degrees outside. And yeah, I can drive it, but you know, it's no fun of driving a convertible when it's freezing outside, right? So um, yeah, I, I'm going to do the first oil change and I think I'm going to put it away for a while. I'm going to wash it up and just kind of put it away until, you know, we get to that April after pollen because I hate pollen. Um, but yeah, after we get to that season, um, you know, we'll have some more videos and content coming out. Um, and let me know if you guys have a Camaro, you know, definitely let me know what your favorite mods are, what your favorite things are about the car. And, you know, let's, let's keep this community growing. Um, like always appreciate it. One love, stay safe and, um, see you next time.